some of you have been given a few, some of you have been given many. And this is a gift of grace. It's not something that, that you can say, this is mine and I have it, and I am going to lay the shirt. It's a gift of grace, it's not to be boasted about. It's to be used in the work of the kingdom. I love the, the words that Paul addresses in, in Ephesians when he talks about the, the grace gifts where Jesus sent and he gave the grace gifts to the church. And there the grace gifts are those of apostle and the prophet and the pastor and the evangelist and pastor and teacher. Those gifts are gifts of grace to the church. And we as, as his people are given those gifts that we might use them in the, in the body of Christ. We all want to encourage you graduates today to be not like that third servant who took the gift that God had given to him and back a hole and buried it, but to recognize the gifts that God has given to you and to use them in the ministry of the kingdom of God. There's something else that this parable says to me in the context of this graduation service. You each could consider this degree that is certainly conferred on you as a talent that God has given to you. You, you study hard for it. Don't let me take that away from you. I'll be there where you are and I know how hard it is. But it's been a grace to you as well. And as you have done it, God's grace has been upon you. And as you have worked on it, you have to have the start of things that are going to affect your ministry for years to come. And the question that you face is this. What would you do with this degree? How do you use your Master of Ministry? How do you use your Doctor of Ministry degree? Now, you can be like that third circuit. You can take it home, you don't have to dig a hole, you can fill open your drawer and put it in, close it and forget about it. In other words, you can say, I've got my degree now, let's get on with what I'm going to do. That would not be a wise steward because you'd be throwing God's gift back in his face. I want to suggest to you today, in line with this whole parable, that in one sense, today is to you a new king. You have your more, and most of you have already begun to use the, the talent to do the kingdom's work. Or some of you may still be looking at their young. Today, you power into this year. It's our way of saying to you, well done, good and faithful servant. But Jesus, is saying to you at this moment, take my hand and let's do this time to the ministry together. You are not going out to work on your own. But you are called to do the ministry that God has for you in fellowship with Jesus, empowered by the Spirit of God. You see, if you go out to do it on your own, it becomes a work. If you put your hand in Jesus' hand in His ministry, and you trust in the power of the Spirit, and you will find it's a gift of grace to your spirit. You know, Paul spoke on a number of occasions of us being partners with Jesus Christ in his ministry. Just as Jesus sent the disciples out in the ministry of the kingdom of God to proclaim that message, to demonstrate it, signs and wonders, so he has never seen it yet. He's going to take you, he's going to send you out to proclaim and demonstrate the kingdom of God. But you must always do it in partnership with Jesus Christ. You must always do it in the power of the Holy Spirit. The message, the gospel of the kingdom of God is a message of grace. There are going to be ups and downs as you, you seek to serve Jesus. But as you seek to, to minister with Jesus, can I just give you three very quick suggestions? Keep close to Jesus. Keep close to Jesus. Jesus wants to take your hand you can't give your hand to Jesus if you're walking too far away from him. Listen to the Spirit's small voice. Be open to what he would say to you and, and do that. Don't try and plan for years ahead. Jesus walks in the here and now. And his grace is sufficient for you to So many things come in upon you that are probably already doing it. 